I wrote up something so I don't get off track, so I'm just going to read it. Um, I'm going to pose a couple questions first. Can you know or be confident that you have salvation without believing once saved, always saved? And the answer is yes. Yeah. Do you need to completely be worried or constantly i'm sorry do, me, do you need to constantly be worried that you'll lose salvation if you don't believe one saved always saved and the answer is no um people who believe one saved always saved can't understand these answers it's like being married to a spouse that you never have to worry is going to ever treat you bad or step out of the matrimony but you have the option to leave them now you would have to be out of your mind to walk out of that marriage but let's just say there's a few who do it anyway does that mean that others who are in that same type of marriage need to also worry about their marriage falling apart too the answer is no they wouldn't have to worry about it because why would they there's only one question you need you need to ask yourself if you want to examine your faith and know that you're following after Jesus and that question is do you seek after the things of God and by God, I mean the God of the Bible who sent his only begotten son to shed his blood and die on the cross for your sins. Do you seek after God, the things of God? You know, are you, are you more worried about earthly things? Or are you, are you more concerned with godly things? All you have to do is ask yourself that question. If you answer honestly, then you'll know whether you're you're following after Jesus or not. Um, I'm going to read from Hebrews 12, 24 to 29. So, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel, see that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not, he refuse him that spake on earth. Much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire okay now who was the mediator of the Old Testament that was Moses he's the one who went up to Mount Sinai got the word from God related to the people who was the mediator of the New Testament that would be Jesus Jesus is our mediator. Um, those people who refused to believe what God was saying through Moses never received the promised land, just like those people today who refuse to believe Jesus are likewise not going to receive the promised land. Now, who doesn't listen to Jesus today? There, there are many people who don't. But one of the groups is one saved, always saved. I hear from them all the time. Well, we don't listen to Jesus, we listen to Paul. On top of that, they only listen to Paul when it's something they want to hear. Otherwise, they say Paul was talking to someone else. That's if something, you know, if Paul says something that doesn't suit them, then, well, that's just for somebody else. And, you know, we're dispensationalists because we went to Bible school. I, you know, I don't know. Um, something else the scripture says is that these people whose faith can be shaken are not going to remain. God will shake heaven and earth so that whatever remains will remain forever. Now I think th this is my, my opinion on why okay and maybe it says somewhere that I've missed but I just think that that God isn't going to put up with rebellion again not in heaven or or on earth those who remain are going to be those who will want to remain true to the Word of God for 
eternity. So at that point, death and hell can be destroyed forever in the lake of fire because there will be nothing left after that great shaking of heaven and earth that will ever need death and hell available to them. They will be and will want to remain followers of Jesus forever. And one more thing I want to point out is that God's grace in verse 28 gives us the ability to serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. So part of God's grace, part of, part of what he gives us is that ability. I'm going to read it again. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. So this little passage says a whole lot, and which is why I wanted to just do a quick little video about it. Um, I, again, I cannot stress enough to watch out for deception, to get into the word for yourselves and be ready. Be ready either for the rapture or your death or whatever is going to happen because life is short regardless of if the rapture is going to happen in your lifetime or not so be prepared have your have your lamps full of oil i hope everybody has a blessed day